Hey guys, I am very excited to show off our catalog cost groups for our outdoor kitchens and also to show how we're structuring our catalog so that we can quickly and reliably build proposals filled with the verbiage and the details of the project with a minimum amount of typing in for each item and also reducing the amount of errors when proposals are being built and reducing the complexity of the documents for the customers. So. Let's go ahead and take a look here. I'm gonna start by showing you the structure that we are using. And in JobTread, you can create cost items and cost groups. Cost items are the actual labor or materials or equipment, and they behave a little bit differently than the groups. The groups contain the cost items. And in JobTread, you can do one, two, three, four, five, six levels deep. So this makes it a very powerful estimating tool, but it can also make it complicated if we're trying to put in just like lots and lots of layers of groups within groups within groups. And so this is a structure that we've been working on. It's been working for us very well and we're very happy with how it's working so far. And the idea is this, we've got what we're calling levels We've identified this 100 level, which we use for phasing, high level organization. This is budget organization, things like concept one or concept two. This helps us manage versions within the budget. Then we've got below that, the, what we're calling the 200 level. This is like the work area level. So this is gonna be things like, this is gonna be the work area level. So this will be things like the front landscaping or the back patio with the pavilion. It'll be something about the project that we can draw a large circle around and say, this is a chunk. It's helpful for whenever we're discussing the project with the customer because we can say we can turn it into phase one or phase two or make it all one phase and do it together. Then we've got the 300 level, this third group within a group within a group. And we are calling this the service group level. So this is the organization that's going to be category service, landscaping, beds, masonry, fireplace, masonry, outdoor kitchen. And these are going to be the large buckets that we say, what are we doing at the house? This thing, let's put this here in this work area. And within that service, we've got a 400 level. It's like that fourth tier down. And we have identified the three main things that most of the services are made up for. So far, all of our services fit this structure. And that is that every service is made up of a material selection, some sort of group that is an option for outdoor kitchens, it's appliances. For fireplaces, it's a fireplace framing like the wood box size or the fire box size, chimney extensions, etc. And then we've got this third group, installation group. And this installation tier houses the groups that are then used to calculate the installation effort and produce the brief descriptions of what it takes to build that particular service. So let's see this in action. I'm going to add a group for outdoor kitchen. We're gonna extend this service so it's 300. Now within this tier, We've got the material selection and we've got the countertops and the stone veneers. Now, right now in the catalog item, these are selection groups, which means the materials inside of this group can be selected here on the side. And here's what that looks like in the document. It's gonna look like a multiple choice option here, like a radio button. And it's gonna show the square footage. This can be adjusted later on the document, what shows quantities or costs, things like tax, that's all shown later in the document. And so that's what the selection group here looks like. Same thing with natural stone veneer, if we want to take a look at that. Now we're looking at the all the options for the natural stone veneers. Now, at a glance here, you're probably thinking what most people are thinking, that's a lot of stone options to give a customer, and you're not wrong. So the goal of this selection group here for the materials is we handle the majority, probably all, 
of the material selection through the design process. So we're not really sending out documents with selection options, like very rarely, if it's like a small thing and they just need to select it, or if they wanna pick between, you know, which work areas do they want on the contract, we can, sh we can make the work areas within a phasing group that is a selection group, and then they can say just the front yard, front yard and side yards, that sort of thing. So when we are using this selection group, we use it to help us understand what are our options. In this case, we like the sky mist polished countertop. Now they come in with this quantity formula so that if I wanted to use it as a selection group, we can type this in. Now let's say it's 40 square feet. And it's gonna populate a cost here. Now in this case, we like the sky mist, so we'll just grab this out of the group and delete the group. Okay, and then if we wanna type in that distance, since it does come in with a formula, we just delete that formula out of there. Okay, so that's our countertop. We're gonna do the same thing with the natural stone veneer. If I wanted to give them a selection, let's say it was down to maybe just three veneers, Let's say we didn't want to offer these, but we did want to offer those guys. But we do like the Ledgestone Cobalt. We can delete these from the budget. And now what we can do is we can offer, say, a condensed version of material selections. Okay, so we like the Chateau Bay. We'll grab this, pull it out of the group, and then get rid of this group. Okay, so now we've selected our materials. Now we're moving on to our appliances. So in our appliances, we've got a group for uh, quantity of grills. Uh, maybe this belongs in the installation group. Right now we've got it in the appliance group because it just kind of goes with the appliances here. We've got some vents, some grill packages, grill, different types of grills. And this is where basically we load up all of our appliance items so that when someone's building an outdoor kitchen proposal, they can see again what their options are without having to type in a cost item and hope that they use the right keywords or the right phrases to get to what they're looking for within your catalog. It also adds a layer of protection for when you're importing your catalog, that your catalog isn't gonna be so heavily reliant on the naming structure of your cost items. That's gonna be really helpful in the future if there's any kind of integration that imports cost items from an outside source. And so, um, or if you're in, like our plants, we upload a spreadsheet. I'm not gonna go through and rename every plant for the naming structure. I'm just gonna type in that plant and that plant's gonna live within some cost groups. So that's what we've got going on here. So it looks like a lot. So let's say in this outdoor kitchen, we are going natural gas. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get rid of the propane version, we've got a grill, we've got some vents, we've got, uh, let's say some doors, they want a 30 inch stainless door, let's say they want two of those, you got two of those, two of those, one of those, we've got some drawers, we would like a triple drawer in here, so we got one of those, and then lastly, uh, let's do a fridge. Let's get a mini fridge in there. Pretty straightforward outdoor kitchen. And let's save our progress. That's a good habit. Packages and grills and here, here, don't need these. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, I accidentally deleted that installation here. Okay, so let's get rid of these groups here. All right, so now we've got our appliance selection. Now this is what our document's gonna look like so far. We've got our material selection and our appliance selection. And it's pretty tidy. So we've got countertop, We've got the natural stone veneer, 
the appliance list with some pictures and details and it's just a very clean presentation whether you'd like the quantity to show or not that can be set up on the document uh, I will show you this one spot right here. You're going to see it more so in the installation group here, actually. So um, let's just take a look at the installation group. So on this installation group, this is where we are really leveraging the power of the formulas. So we've got, I want to show you this eyeball. If you want to see the document visibility, you select this visibility icon. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to hide everything within that group. So our linear foot of steel framing, we can hide every, we can hide the hours and the number of studs and, and the boxes of screws, the bags of mortars, we can hide all that on the document so that our document can stay uncluttered. And what we've got here is our installation groups. For outdoor kitchen, we've got our footing. We'll open this up and we'll put Let's say we've got 40 square feet and there's three piers. Let's say we've got some steel framing. It's a total of, say, 20 linear feet. Let's say 15 linear feet of framing. And what this is going to do is it's going to produce the number of hours we need to pre-frame the outdoor kitchen cabinet, the number of studs, screws, cement board, um, lathe, mortar, and that's all going to be populated here. Our countertop, square footage, 40. Actually, this is our countertop. And this is our masonry. Let's say there was 75 square feet of masonry. We'd also want to do that for material selection. We've got 70 square foot, sorry, 75 square feet of masonry here. We don't need any difficult hand trenching, so we'll delete this from the budget. But we do have some hand trenching, say maybe the ends of a machine trench, plus some equipment trenching. These are populated with some capturing our equipment usage or rental, attachment rental, and then also the hours to produce that. And then we've also got our utilities, which could then get sent to our um, subs for these guys. All right, and we don't need the water line, right? So we just have a gas line. We're going to delete that from the budget. Now, this is where we would write in the description for the gas, and then we'd also write in the description for the electric. And what's nice about having this electric right inside this group is that we can use different descriptions. This description at the group level is going to be visible to the customer, and the description to the cost item that will be sent for the proposal from our electrician is going to include additional detail. For example, in this gas line, we may be itemizing the length or I don't know, there's just some sort of detail that we want to make sure our plumber understands as part of the equation for that proposal, but doesn't necessarily need to be on the proposal to the uh, customer. So that's what that looks like. And that's it. We're done quoting this outdoor kitchen. Here's what this is going to look like on your document. You got a very nice, very tidy, well-organized arrangement, outdoor kitchen. Here's the materials, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Here's the appliances with some details about the appliances. And here's what it's gonna to take to install this outdoor kitchen. So that's what our cost groups look like for outdoor kitchens. And we're applying it to the rest of our services, things like retaining walls, paver patios, concrete patios, um, decks, anything else that we're serving for our outdoor living design build company. So that's it. Thanks.